things, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at a volume problem where we can apply the shell method. Now this problem is really simple and the point of the problem in video is to show you how to apply the volume formula here by using cylindrical shells. Now we're not gonna explain in this video where this formula comes from, but rather just how to apply it. And it's worth pointing out here, students often forget that factor of X. And that makes all the difference in setting up your volume formula here by using cylindrical shells or the shell method. All right, so all we have to do is notice we have a region basically below a curve down to the x-axis between two values, x equals a and x equals b, and we're rotating that region now about the y-axis. And that's the big change. So if you ever see functions of x and you're asked to rotate a region about the y-axis, that's usually the clue to apply the shell method. All right, now with that in mind, let's go to our problem here. We have a few curves given. The one of interest is the curve bounding the top of the region, y equals 8x squared plus 2. And that's pretty much all we need to set up our volume integral to find the volume of this region where we rotate it about the y-axis. And it's always good, as I tell my students, to be able to sketch the region and visualize the solid. And you can see it's kind of scooped out or carved out in the middle there, giving you this kind of a curved out bowl if you uh, rotate that about the y-axis. All right, so let's go ahead and take our function of x here. This would be our f of x, and we're just gonna plug it in, and we're not gonna forget about that factor of x. So let's set up our volume integral by using cylindrical shells. We have this as an integral from here, zero to one. We have a factor of two pi x, and that is multiplying the function, basically the function on the top of that region, eight x squared plus two. So we'll put that in parentheses, indicating that is the function of x, f of x in that formula. And we're just basically plugging that in. All right, now this integral is really simple. All we need to do is basically distribute that factor of x and we get some very simple antiderivatives to calculate. Let me bring the factor of two pi out front as well. And we'll write that now as an integral from zero to one. Distribute your x in, you're gonna get eight x cubed. And distribute the x in to the two and you'll get two x. All right, and this requires no special integration methods. We can just find antiderivatives by using the power rule. So if we carry down our factor of two pi, your antiderivative, you're gonna get a factor of one fourth times x to the fourth, eight times one over four, that's gonna to cancel to two. So you'll get two x to the fourth. And when you find an antiderivative for two x, x by itself with the power rule, That'll integrate to one half x squared, two and a half will cancel. So you should get your antiderivative here as just plus x squared for that last term. And we're gonna evaluate that from zero to one. All right, at this point we just need to plug in x is one and then subtract when we plug in x is zero. And if you plug in x is one, that's really nice. Looks like you're just gonna get three And when you plug in x as zero to that, that evaluates to zero. And it looks like what we get as our answer for the volume by using the shell method, we get six pi here. And it's worth pointing out, this is six pi units cubed. And whatever units you're using, it'd be those units cubed to denote the volume. So that's it for this problem. Again, very simple to set up. Again, the point of the video was just to kind of understand how to apply the volume formula by using cylindrical shells, what's often known as the shell method. Hope you enjoyed the short video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.